passing out your syllabus, and we are going to kind of go over the first little bit of the syllabus today. So you guys can go ahead and get that out. Um, we're going to, I'm going to split this into two videos. So we'll do this initial part that's applicable to everybody, and then I'll go back and do little sections, one for my classes here in Cooper, one for my online classes. So we'll kind of rewrap that a little bit. So um, course description, principles of health science says, this course offers an introduction into the industry of career and careers of health science. Kind of what I said in the intro yesterday. This course provides the opportunity to research and discover basic healthcare practices, healthcare careers, and common uh, diseases. So we'll look at, we're going to kind of touch all over the place. Because you as a student can expect to spend time with hands-on activities, researching, creating projects, presenting things, participating in group work, and individual work both. There's no prerequisites for this class. Um, like I said the other day, I'm a registered nurse, but I also, I did not say this, I also have my teaching certificate, um, got that over at A&M Commerce, so I've taken class uh, to do that as well. Expectation says you are expected to effectively contribute to class discussion and activities. Okay, you'll work in groups or pairs frequently and are expected to do so willingly and with great effort. When we work in groups in here, everybody's involved. One of the main things we'll do is after everybody's done in their group work is we will, um, I'll have you guys fill out a rubric for each other. You're going to grade everybody else in your group. And people are typically pretty honest on there. So keep that in mind. But the thing is, like I said the other day, we do lots of projects because that's what the real world looks like. The real world you do projects. That's how work is. And that's why we do them in here. And so if you don't contribute and if you don't do well with that in here, that's an area you really need to work on. Because I can't think of a single job in any field where you don't use teamwork and uh, you don't have to work with others. Very, 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 very few jobs is it really like that. Says your ability in the working world will heavily depend on how well you work with others. All students are expected to follow the rules of the classroom as well as the rules of any place that we may visit. Just know that and participation grades are taken frequently. I do take lots of participation grades, just FYI. One thing that really drives me crazy about projects, and I'll tell you this up front so you'll know, um, I cannot stand when we call out when I call out groups for people to huff and puff, to make a crazy face at someone else, and I'm not just talking about like sticking your tongue out. I know you guys are past that, I hope. Um, but I'm talking about the eye rolling or the eyebrows that go up that look at the person that you actually wanted in a group with. Um, just, just don't do it. Okay, all groups in here are going to be picked at random. Okay, the way that I do this, now my online classes may be a little different. Okay, you guys, um, you guys uh, grab these um, popsicle sticks, I mean these tongue depressors, popsicle sticks, oh my gosh, for a reason. I had you put your names on there. What we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, put your uh, tongue depressor in a cup, and that way I can draw your names. That's how I pick groups. Always random. Always random. Never fails. It's going to be random. Okay? So don't complain because the next time you'll hopefully be with somebody different. Or you may be with the same person, so don't complain too much. Okay, classroom rules. These are really important. Really simple. They're a little bit vague and they're like that on purpose. Um, but I want you guys to know what they are. Okay, so tomorrow you guys will have a quiz over the class rules. Just FYI, telling me right now. You do not have to memorize what they are. You just need to understand what they mean. Hey, they're not, they're up here posted on my board. They're not going to go away from there. They're going to stay there even during the quiz tomorrow. 
but you need to understand what they mean. So number one is be respectful. Okay, so this include this has three parts. One, um, I expect you to respect me and the aid or for you online students, whoever's in your class. Here's the thing. I've had my education to be standing up here before you. So is everybody else that you're with. Okay? That's their job. This is my job. Um, and so that in turn should you should start out with respect for us just for that reason. Okay, there's no, we shouldn't need to earn that respect. We're adults. We've done the, what we needed to do to get to the place where we are in our careers. And that's it. Okay, so I expect you to respect me. And that means um, you don't call me by my first name. My name is Mrs. Bird. The same for all of your other teachers. Um, that means that you uh, respect me enough to tell me the truth. You uh, respect me enough to take care of my stuff. If you, you respect me enough to not badmouth me to a substitute that comes in or somebody else, um, that's just not appropriate and it's not going to get you where as far as it, anywhere as far as the job goes. And I'll tell you right now, I've had students in the past who I've said, don't put me down for a reference because if they call me and I tell them the truth, which I will, uh, it's not going to be good for you. So you better not put me down, which is sad. It's sad. I would, I would never say that unless it was really an issue. Uh, the other thing you need to be respectful for is the equipment in this classroom or in your classroom if you're in online classes. Um, we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars of equipment in this room. Every little thing, you know, costs lots of money. And one, I don't want you guys to have to pay for it. And two, I want to be able to use it in the future. Okay? And, I'm, and every, I mean everything. That torso over there that's got all the organs, if I have to buy another one of those, it's like $700. My mannequin back here, we call her Wilma. Um, you know, she's $700. That bed is several hundred dollars. Everything in here is like that. My microscopes are several hundred dollars each. These are not just the cheapy microscopes that you used in, you know, seventh grade. These are microscopes. You can use them at the college level. They're very good. I expect you guys to really take care of them. Okay, um, the desks. Let's not write and carve into the desk, please. If I find out that you're doing that, sending you to the office. And no gum. Don't put gum underneath the desk. Um, the, the other thing that, as far as respect goes, is just respecting each other. Um, so respect the people around you. If I'm talking, don't talk so that other people can listen and learn just because you don't care doesn't mean they don't care and you're disrespecting them uh, by talking while I'm talking as well as disrespecting me um, respect them enough not to copy off of their work um, respect yourself enough not to copy off of somebody else's work that's another thing have some respect for yourself self-respect yes I call it that so I would rather um, and I'll say this again later, but I would rather you fail a test because you didn't study for it than to make an A on um, on a test that you cheated on. I mean, that's not even having respect for yourself to even give yourself a chance. So yourself, others, make sure you, you respect my equipment. Make sure you respect me. Okay, the second rule is have integrity. So what is integrity? And you guys might even pause the video for a second. Just talk about that. What do you guys think integrity is? Pause the video for a second and discuss that. Okay, I think, when I think of integrity, a lot of answers I usually, I, I get frequently are your, um, you get, you know, you're honest. Um, typically that's the one I see the most of actually. Here's my, my ideas on integrity. It does include honesty, absolutely. Integrity, your integrity is shown by what you do when no one else around you cares 
or uh, is watching or just cares about what you're doing. So, for example, um, one way for you to have integrity is when you're at Walmart and you take your car out to your car, put the car back up where it goes. I talk about this every year. Put the car back where it goes, in the little cart area. Hey, don't make somebody else have to pick up after you. Have enough integrity, have enough gumption within yourself to pick up after yourself. Okay, if you knock five things down on the shelf at Walmart, pick them up and put them back up there so somebody else doesn't have to clean up your mess. I realize that other people are paid to clean up at Walmart, but that should not be because you decided that you were too good to pick something up that you knocked off, off onto the floor. Those kind of things are having integrity. It's what you do when nobody else is around and nobody else cares. You know, do you, what do you have within your own self that makes you do the right thing? And that's it. It's doing the right thing when nobody cares, nobody watches, you know. And, and nobody caring is different than nobody watching. Sometimes your friends don't care if you cheat. But that doesn't make it the right thing to do. So have some integrity. Number three is come prepared. So bring all of your stuff. If you have a text, we don't have textbooks. But uh, bring your stuff with you to class. Bring, make sure you bring something to write on and write with. Other than that, you need to make sure that you've got your work ready, your homework ready. If you're working in groups, you've got your group work ready. And the other thing that come prepared means is that you come in, you walk through these doors with an attitude of, I'm ready to learn. That's coming prepared. You're prepared with an attitude that's ready to get going for the day. And I expect that. When you walk out that door, we leave everything else behind. We come in here, we discuss what we're going to discuss. You're prepared to think about it. Do the work that we need to do. And going back to be respectful for a second, I have a major pet peeve in my classroom. Um, and you'll hear me say this. We don't talk about people in this class if they're not in here to defend themselves. And even if they are in here, we're not going to be ugly to each other. So, um, so make sure you keep that in mind. If somebody else, somebody brings something up, say, are they in here? No, so that means don't talk about it. Number four, take ownership of your choices. This one is really important to me. It drives me crazy. Um, and not just that, as an employer, if I'm an employer, I don't want an employee who is not going to be willing to fess up when they make mistakes. Um, so take ownership. If you choose, let's say you choose to, um, let's say you choose to go to the football game on Thursday night and you have a test on Friday and you take the test and you bomb it. Well, you can get mad at me for making the test too hard, too hard, um, or you can you can take ownership of the choice that you made to go to the football game instead of study. Those are the kind of things that you got to think about. Okay, if you're choosing to be in five different activities in the school year, then you're choosing to make less time for you to study. That's your choice. That's not, that's not the fault of the teacher or anybody else around you. So take ownership of your choices. If you opt to do something, be ready for the consequences of that. Uh, number five, convince the teacher that you're doing your best. I need to be convinced that you're doing your best. Not just you make 100 on every single paper and because it's easy and you think that that's good. No, I need to be convinced that you're actually doing your best. Making a hundred on a paper doesn't doesn't tell me that you're doing your best. Um, time and effort and participation in class will tell me those things as well. Okay, so again, tomorrow you'll get a quiz over those rules. You just need to understand them. Be prepared to give a good definition of integrity. And you can put it in your own words, but just know that that's coming. Okay, grades, as far as Cooper goes, 50% daily grades, quiz grades, homework, participation, 
Um, and then other than that, it's just tests and projects. Almost, almost all projects and presentations are um, test grades here. So for me, at least that's how I do them. So that's 50%. Now all my online classes, uh, your grading percentages may look a little bit different and it will go by your particular school. Um, but quizzes and paydays, which we'll talk about in a minute, those are all uh, quizzes. Those are daily grades. The only other thing, and I'll talk about this when we get to, oh, I don't have it on this one. Oh, yeah, I do. We'll get to it in a minute. Okay, tests. It says tests will generally be given over each unit. All project grades and papers also are counted as test grades. Any papers that we write, projects, and most presentations. All tests are comprehensive, so you're able, you may see some old information that you did have before. Um, make sure that you keep up with your studies. We've always got some old medical terms on there, so hang on to them and look for them. Okay, if you are absent during a test, it is your responsibility to set up a time to make it up. Your responsibility. I'm telling you that now. Okay, especially with Miss Pickering and I going back and forth, it's going to be a little bit different. So it will be up to you to make up that test, leaving it in your hands. Okay, so uh, it must be made up within two days of the absence. Now, if you're absent for multiple days, I think the uh, handbook says. I think you get two days and then you get an additional day for every day over two days of your absent or something like that. So yes, we'll take that into account. But you just need to know if you're absent for a day, you need to make up that test within two days. Now if there are extenuating circumstances, we can go beyond that, but we need still have to discuss when you're gonna take it within those first two days of you coming back. Okay, so just communicate. Once you get past those two days, it's going to be a late grade. Late work. I haven't heard the new policy yet because we haven't had in service and I won't be there yet. But as far as last year went at least, our late work policy, you have two days to make it up for a late grade. So that's the same for a test grade. Once you surpass those two days after your absence, then you get two days for a late grade, which is the max of 70. And then after that, I'm not taking it. And I will not take anything that's beyond that two day late grace period this year. Not taking it, period. Not taking it at the end of six weeks. I'm not taking it the third day. I'm not taking it. And we're going to date stamp everything so we'll know exactly when you turned it in. Make sure that you're watching um, your weekly paper, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, medical terminology says you'll receive new words or abbreviations weekly. Every Monday, you'll get a list of new terms. Okay, you'll have um, here to start with, we'll typically have like four or five abbreviations, and then the rest will actually be terms that we'll use. Now, later on in the year, after we've done our medical terminology um, chapter, we'll start doing like uh, word portions or word parts that will get there and you will understand it. So after new words are given, you will receive a weekly, I call them paydays. Those are just your vocabulary quizzes. I call them paydays because you work hard all week and on Friday you get to, um, that's kind of your day to like show what you've learned and get paid. So everybody makes a hundred, hopefully, as long as you study because you're going to know exactly what's on it. Um, now, in the future, we'll add, like this This week, there will only be the 15 terms, or next week, whenever we have that vocabulary quiz. Um, but after that, there will always be at least 20 terms, typically at least, I will say always. Usually, there will be at least 20 terms with five or more old ones. So you need to go back and study the old ones, too. My suggestion, in the past I've made people do this, but 
I'm not very good. I won't be very good. Sometimes I'm not going to be here at making sure that that happens. In the past, I've made everybody make flashcards with all the terms. I would strongly, strongly suggest that. But you can make them on Study Blue. You can make them on Study Stack. Um, whatever. I'm not going to require that this year. Um, last year, I did a participation grade on it. This year, I'm not going to do that just because I'm not going to be here. But I would really suggest that you guys do that. Um, so those are the quizzes. Again, every week we'll get those and uh, we'll take those quizzes. They're usually matching. The words are matching and then the abbreviations. I'll give you the abbreviation and you have to give me the word. Those have to be spelled correctly. The paydays. So the paydays are graded. Everything else is kind of graded normally, um, but it's minus one point for every misspelling that you get on the abbreviations. Just one point per word. Just make sure that you keep up with those and that you study them uh, regularly. Um, one other thing to add, and I haven't added this on to my syllabus yet, I don't need to add it on to y'all, is um, at the end of um, at the end of every six weeks, I will take all of your payday quiz grades, your daily grades that you get per week, and I average those to make an additional test grade. I've had some people who their payday test grade at the end of the six weeks has really brought down their grade. So make sure you're studying for those every week so that when you get to the end of the six weeks and I average those up, it doesn't pull your grade down. It's really meant to pull it up and, and help your grade. Uh, materials for this class, black pens. Uh, make sure you have notebook paper. I do prefer black pens, FYI. Um, you do need some kind of notebook. I would suggest, I don't know, most of my students usually like to keep the stuff that they get in here because they think they'll, they'll use it later and it's quite possible that they will. So I would suggest probably like a one and a half inch binder. Uh, but if you, all you have is one inch, that's fine too. Main things that you want to keep up with in here, and you might write this down somewhere, you need to keep up with all of your paydays and all of the tests. All of your paydays, all of the tests, and let me just go ahead and say all of your, if we ever do a quiz, like we'll do an insurance quiz in a couple weeks, you need to hang on to that too. Quizzes, paydays, tests. Hang on to those for the entire semester because when it comes time for the semester exam, that's what I'm going to use to make your exam. Um, extra credit. Okay, so, and this is available for anybody in any of my classes. But in here, they're in that clear uh, tray at the back on the black shelf. Um, online, I'll make it accessible in Gaggle. Um, but at any time during the first, uh, like we've got a six week grading period, any time during the first five weeks, of that six weeks, you can get an extra credit assignment and all you do is follow the directions on here. Um, all you have to do is write a one page typed, double spaced summary of a magazine or journal, journal, journal article that you've read that has to do with health science. Um, it has to do with health science and it has to be submitted, it has to be turned in by the Friday before the last week of the six weeks. So, for example, this first six weeks ends September 26th. Well, that means that all anything that you do for extra credit is due on the 19th, and I will not make any exceptions for that. So, you can do that. You can do that twice as six weeks, and each summary is worth five points on a test grade. That's an extra ten points on a test grade. On a test grade, that can that can bump up an average. Uh, sometimes it bumps it up by two points. So know that that's always available. I will not remind you of it. I'm telling you about it now. If they're going to sit back there, if I run out of the information, the papers on it back there, let me know. I'll make more copies. Um, but yeah, that's it. So it has to be turned in though that Friday before. Now, for those of you in my online classes that are on a nine week grading scale, our grading period, yours are due at the end of the eighth week. It's just that Friday before it ends. Um, and I guess technically that's up to your teacher, but that's how I always do it. Um, and for those of you who are on the nine-week grading, you can do up to three per, 
her um, grading period. Okay, um, one other thing I want to talk about for I stop, and no, I don't remember what it was. Well, I can't remember, so I guess I'll talk about it in the next little section. Oh, the weekly papers, that's what. Okay, so hopefully you guys have already seen your weekly instructions. If not, you will soon. So, um, every week on Monday, you guys will get a new little weekly paper. This is basically the lesson plan for the week. Um, now, mine is a little, has a little more detail on it than yours does. But first, what you'll see are your new payday terms. Every Monday, you'll get your new payday terms. The term and the abbreviation is on here. So know that that is where you'll get that information. Other than that, it just tells you exactly what we're going to be doing every day. So if you're absent, um, it's all on here. There's no reason. Now, here's an example. So let's say you're absent Wednesday, you come back on Thursday. This is where you find out what you missed. You don't have to interrupt me in the middle of a lecture to find out. You, you go to this paper, you look, oh, I missed the class rules quiz. I guess I need to take that. So after class or before class, you say, Miss Bird, when can I take the quiz? And I'll say, okay, well, maybe we'll have some time at the end of class. Or maybe you say, well, can I come in in the morning and take it? Okay, all of the absent work for my students here at Cooper, all of the absent work is in this folder right here. Okay, and it's labeled A and P, Health Science, Principles of Health Science, and then extras is just extra worksheets that I end up with. So you can find your makeup work in there. Now quizzes, I want to know if you're taking a quiz so I can make sure that you're not cheating and you don't take it with you. But in, other than that, you just grab it out of there and go. Okay, you don't have to ask me. It's in there. You use this and go with that. If there's something extra, I'll let you know. Now, here's the other thing. If you know, let's say Monday, let's say Wednesday you have an orthodontist appointment, and on Monday you already know that we're going to, oh, we're going to have that class rules quiz. There's already homework on here. You already know about it. You need to get it done and have it ready to go on Thursday. Um, you already know about the absence. So there's no reason to do that. But this is like your go-to. If you're absent, it's your go-to for the week. If I forget to tell you something, but it's on here, this is me to making announcements in class. Okay? This is me telling you what we're doing. We have, if there's a test written down on Friday, this is me telling you we have a test on Friday. So you'll get one of these every week. My online students, you guys will do the same. You'll have access to the lesson plans on Gaggle every week. You'll be able to go back and look. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Um, I think this this has just been I started doing this actually two years ago when I had my baby when I had my first baby and I was on maternity leave I started doing this and it just worked so well um, it just really helps for students to stay organized and me to stay organized um, so anyway so that's the other thing I want to talk with you about um, I usually have one or two extras of everything but once those are gone you're gonna have to figure it out find somebody else who still has a paper, a blank paper or something, and uh, make a copy of theirs or whatever. So that's that. I will um, I'll make a part two of the syllabus and go over specifics for Cooper and specifics for um, online. So I think that's it.